What's up everyone, Jeremy here, Unsleeve Media, and uh, I've got a pretty sweet unboxing for you. It's Return to Ravnica, one of the sets I was really, really excited about. It's one of the sets that really got me back into the game. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the investigation that Wizards of the Coast launched. Um, but this way, if you just want to check out the opening, you can bug out after this, and you don't have to watch crap that you don't want to watch. So, Return to Ravnica was particularly uh, exciting for a lot of us because of the reprint of Shocklands. Uh, at the time, um, they were very expensive due to being due to the fact they were modern staples. Uh, but they printed Return to Ravnica into Oblivion, and now the shop Shocklands have all bet all but been completely um, depressed in value, which is great. Right? Like, this is great. That means players can get it, and it's not expensive. This is a good thing. Um, but the set also had some extraordinarily powerful cards. Cards that, uh, you know, were format warping cards. Um, so we see our Shocklands here on this page. Rogue's Passage making cards unblockable. This is also one of the most fun uh, times that I have ever drafted. Rakdos Return, that saw play. A lot of commanders in this set. But just because they just really, really pushed the power. Detention Sphere was a definite a staple in control. Armada Worm was always a great card to open and draft uh, because uh, it's basically an auto win. Abrupt Decay sees play all the way back into the most expensive formats in the game. So there are a lot of memorable cards in the set. Pack Rat, I played that in my Mono Black uh, Devotion standard deck. Um, there's just so many. Wasn't Doorkeeper in the set too? For you Mill fans, a Jace, AOT, Architect of Thought, the sub play. And so there are a lot of standard cards in this set. Uh, Angel of Serenity never really found its place, but always kind of popped up from uh, time to time as a very expensive pull that you might be able to get. So let's see uh, what we can find. Just a trip, really, this is just about taking the trip down memory lane. Um, oh, yeah, this the, die, the dice in the set were awesome, too. Here we have, like, a dark blue uh, with black speckled and then we have the return to ravnica symbol there and uh let's get going we have the this is the nine packs nothing special about the lands unless you're partial to their these particular lands color i'll kind of just cruise through the commons axpain guardian was good and for fixing Doorkeeper, that's great in the mill deck. Mill was reasonable in limited. Slum Reaper, Slitherhead, Bizarre Cravat, that card sucked for uncommon. And the Ashdell, a very strong 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with first strike and haste. And whenever it, uh, whenever a player casts a spell from Graveyard, Ashdell, it deals 3 damage to that player. So a little bit of dredge hate uh, there, which is great. Just trying to think of some other. Seller of Songbirds, that's seen some play too. It's a strong popper card too. Thought Flare, Treasured Find, oh, and, and uh, Race Course Fury. And then we have Grove of the Guardian. Um, very strong. This probably would have been a flip card nowadays. Um, you pay three, tap it, tap two on creatures you control, sacrifice it, and create an 8 8 green and white elemental. Maybe nowadays you would have just flipped it over. It's hard to say. But what was your, what was your favorite? Uh, color combination to draft. I think if I remember right, just like original uh, Ravnica, Selesnya was extraordinarily strong. Grave Betrayal, 7 mana enchantment. When a creature you don't control dies, return it to the battlefield under your control with an additional 1-1 counter on it. It's also a zombie at that point. That is a maybe an EDH. Probably an EDH. I could see that being more fun if you have three or four other people who might have creatures dying. Um, but that seems like probably the only place you play that. You also have guild gates in this set, too. Rick's, the guild mages are all very strong, and that could oftentimes put you into... Hey, Hallowed Fountain! Hit a Shockland, and a nice one. The blue-white Shockland. That's pretty spicy. 
back then, you know, that was probably a $10 bill. Uh, when the set first came out until it got opened into Oblivion. Codex Shredder, another piece of the mill deck, which was always great. And Pack Rat. Oh, the memories, this card. You know, two mana XX, basically where it's equal to the number of rats, but you pay two and a black, discard a card, and put a copy of it. So you end up with a whole army of rats, basically like a turn uh, three Pack Rat, or turn two Pack Rat, or, or really a turn... Um, five pack rat was extraordinarily difficult because you could also you know you could just always be you know create another one in response to a spell to kit that's trying to kill it death's presence now there's expensive enchantment when a creature you control dies but x11 counters on target creature control where x is the power of that creature these these really expensive enchantments never really never really made me Never really made me uh, excited, but Celestia and Charm, very strong. And an Abrupt Decay. Man, we are hitting all of the spice in the set. This card, even in foil versions, still maintain very, very strong value. Destroy target non-land permanent with covered mana cost of three or less. Now, it was reprinted, wasn't it? It was reprinted in a... I feel like it was reprinted in a Master set recently. Um, but still... It's great to see Pack Rat. I remember seeing Pack Rat in draft, and you're like, I'm going to win. Because most of the time, it was just that that absurdly strong. And Supreme Verdict. Man, we're getting all the standard staples. Four mana board wipe. Very strong. Was uh, control presence at the time. Now, this is look at how good this foiling is. And these cards are not bent. Take note, Wizards of the Coast. Uh, you once had it right. No, just go back to that. Minotaur Aggressor, Is It Charm, Hover Barrier, and Jer Jared's Orders, or Gerard's Orders. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. I'm going to talk about, um, just give you an update on what's going on with this investigation here in a second. But if you choose to dip out here, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon. If you're sticking around, well then, uh, hold on your butts because uh, we've got some crazy stuff going on here. So as many of you know, there is a bit of a kerfuffle that's pretty much dying off now. Uh, as far as I see it anyway, it's kind of a dead meme of uh, people that want me DCI banned by Wizards of the Coast. I mean, this is the limit of their power over me. And there are a lot of people asking for it. And, you know, part of me wants to maintain um, positivity here, but I don't think that would be honest with you. So I fully expect to receive some sort of ban. I don't think it will be lifetime. Um, it could be. Uh, I don't think it would be, but uh, I don't know. Um, when people are reacting with emotion, um, it's uh, you can't predict what they're going to do. You, they're, they're not rational. Um, but I thought for posterity's sake, I would share the correspondence with you that I got from Wizards and what I sent back to them because, um, you know, to be honest, Part of me wants to be happy and try to pretend like this is great. They're going to look at things um, fairly. Um, you know, I do not um, accept that I took part in any targeted harassment. There has been no proof of this other than a montage of mean things that I've said over the past five years. This is all, of course, because Christine Sprankle accused me of being the reason uh, she quit. Now, she provided no evidence of this. Nobody else provided any evidence of, quote, targeted harassment of her. And yet Wizards is moving forward with this investigation uh, nonetheless. Now, I'm going to remain 1% uh, optimistic that they will try to look at this um, fairly. I hope they do. I don't think they will. I, I have a feeling this is going to be more like a kangaroo court because the mob wants its pound of flesh. And this is really the only way Wizards of the Coast can give them their pound of flesh. Um, even though a DCI ban to me is entirely meaningless, uh, it will be uh, ceremonious for them. And when you live your life based on emotions, uh, ceremony is important to you. <laughs> So this morning I received an email, or actually late this afternoon, uh, I received this email that said the following. 
You are being contacted in regards to one of your wizard's accounts. Note, this contact may be in response to a request for personal assistance, blah, blah, blah. Here's what they put. Hi, Jeremy. I'm an investigator at Wizards of the Coast. We have received complaints that allege that statements you have made and actions you have taken on your social media accounts are in violation of Wizards of the Coast Code of Conduct. Wizards is currently investigating these claims and would like to provide you with the opportunity to provide a statement or additional information you would like Wizards to consider. Now, everything you need to know is in this email, right? They don't tell me anything about what these, what people are alleging. They don't give me anything to actually respond to. So, you know, what do they, what do they want? If they really wanted a, a truthful, and uh, if they really wanted to know my side, I believe they would say, hey, here's what people are saying, care to respond. Not, we've received vague complaints about social media, uh, care, to, care to comment. Uh, this is not a good faith, in my opinion, uh, question, but I answered it in good faith, and I want to show you what I sent them. I said, I'm glad you have reached out. Please address the abuse I have been subject to via Christine Sprinkle, Tolarian Community College, the Mana Source, and some of your own employees. I would love to speak about this and finding some help from you, the company that makes the game, as soon as possible. I do not accept these accusations as they have been levied, and I have publicly asked I have been publicly asking for proof for days, and I have received in response, all I've received in response is more harassment. Uh, fortunately for me, you all here can see I'm showing this stuff publicly, right? So it's all out there. Um, I don't need to, you know, there's no question about it. This claim from Christine is completely unfounded. She did not prove any targeted harassment. And as a result of her slanderous tweet, I have been getting death threats. Happy to provide screenshots. People are doxing me, false flagging my content and more. Attached are just a tiny bit of harassment she and the above have caused me. Now I sent them 33 screenshots and that's just from yesterday. Um, I have about a hundred more sitting here on my computer. So here's how this plays out. They're going to ban me. Uh, I'm okay with this. What I want to see is them universally enforce this. If they ban me and not everyone else guilty of the exact same thing they are alleging to ban me of, well then I guess we'll all know that they're really not interested in stopping cyberbullying and harassment as long as the victims are people that they don't like.